Hi everyone, this is Terry. Today I'm going to show you how to add stitches to fabric for either if you have a, a panel like one of those Dream Big panels or you have a wall hanging or you want to make a placemat. Here's a great way to do it. Get buy some printed fabric and use the techniques that you can use in my design center to quilt. Now the first thing I'll tell you is if you're quilting, let's just say I had a two foot wall hanging, 24 inches, you want to add three inches to the length and width of your batting and backing. And that's because when you're quilting, your fabric is going to shrink up. And also don't quilt so it's like bulletproof. It's not particularly attractive if you do something that's so small and so tight. You want your quilts to be usable. And now if it's a wall hanging, that's different. Wall hangings, you can add more stitches. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to go into the settings and we're going to select a stitch. I want to choose stitch 30. You can see it's selected here and I'm using size 20 for my brush. We're going to use a paintbrush today. And what we're going to do is zoom in to 400% so you can see it and take the hand and we'll work around this. Now take your paintbrush and I'm using the mouse so that it's faster to do this. You can use your stylus. You could also use your finger, but I think it's harder to be precise with your hands. And what I want to do is kind of like when I was a kid and I was painting around with my crayons. Now you can just go ahead and fill this in right now, but what I like to do is choose the larger paintbrush to do that. So what we'll do is we'll just use our hand and move around. You notice it doesn't matter where you start and stop because the machine is smart enough to know what this pattern is and to fill this pattern continuously. You saw I just made a sweeping motion and it really doesn't matter about that because I can fill that in. All I have to do is fill it in right here, see? And I can come back up and down. It helps if you zoom in though, because let me show you something. Let's just say, and you can actually see it here, but I can tell you there's a spot right here that's not filled in. Zoom in to 800%, now you can see it. So now I have my paintbrush. I can just go on and fill those areas in. So when you are filling in, you want to zoom in to 800% to make sure that you zoomed, you, you have everything filled in. I'm going to leave it at 200% so we can quickly work our way around this. And this may not be perfect, folks. I have a design I've already digitized. I want to show you the technique, though, and then I'll sh we'll use that design that I digitized. Okay, let's continue. And if you make a mistake, use your eraser. You know, that's what the, your eraser's there for. All right, so you will go all the way around this, and for your time and mine as well, what I'm going to do is get the larger um, paintbrush, and so we'll increase this, and choose OK, and let's fill this in. So you fill it in just like this. You, just going across, stay within those lines. Kind of like I said, it's like coloring. So stay within the lines and zoom in to make sure you haven't missed any areas. Now, the next step, and I I won't go all the way through all of this design because I value your time. What I'm going to do is I want to go on and select another pattern. So the next thing I would do is you, I would go back to my pattern, reduce the size of my paintbrush back down to 20, and I'll choose the circles for the center and choose OK. Choose a different color and choose OK. And now what I would do is go up to 400%, take the hand and move this. And in this case, I see some things that 
um, I want to erase. So I'll go to the eraser tool, choose a circle, choose okay. I'll erase some of these little lines right here. You can have stitches going over one another. It's really not going to hurt anything. This is impressionistic. So if you want to do this, you need to make sure that you don't mind having you know, some irregularities. So what I'm doing is just trying to fill in these voids. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I would go around this like, like so, and then fill in these areas. All right, now the next thing that I would do, and let me just finish the center, and we'll go to next. I would go to, save it to memory when you finish, and then go to next. And then this is where what you want to do is you want to go through and you see we only have two stitches. What I did for this is I selected, I think it was 50%. I wanted it to be smaller and I chose okay. And I looked at it and actually that might be tighter than I want. So let me go up to 75 and see what that looks like and choose okay. And now the next thing that I did on my sample is I changed the angle to 45 degrees and chose OK. And just because I can do it, I, I left the outline on. In many instances, I don't leave that outline on, but in this case, I did. And then I, I chose a random shift of one simply because I wanted it to be somewhat irregular. Then on the center stitches, I went down to 50% because this is a small area and I chose okay. Then I didn't make changes with the angle. I left the outline on. Now keep in mind, you're gonna, you're, you will have two outlines. A random shift, I changed that to two because I wanted these petal or pebbles to be smaller for the seeds of the flower. And then I saved it to memory and set. Now I already have it on my embroidery side, so to save time, we're going over there and we'll choose home and go to embroidery. Let's go to the pocket and let's retrieve that design and choose set. Okay, you can see the design. You also see that I scanned my background image. Let me show you if you scan the background image, you go into your setting page and we'll, what we will do is we'll delete the background and choose okay. And now you don't see that background. So let's scan it again, choose the camera and scan. And we want the background image on, and we'll go ahead and let it recognize this. So we'll give it a moment. Now you could use your projector too, but the thing about the projector is you're not going to see this image projected right on, or all of the design projected on that. So now you see it. I'm going to zoom in so I can see it. Choose the plus, and now I can see that, that image of the design. Now this might be a time that what I want to do is I want to shift it or move it a little bit because things aren't lined up. So to do that, to close the, the window, go to edit, go to move, and then what I'm going to do is zoom in here to 150% or 200%. And you can see how it's outside the lines here now that's okay. It's really not going to matter that much. You just need to decide if you want to move it to the right or to the left. And it's really about how you want this to look. And that's one reason why I said I would stay inside the lines. You can see I went outside on this. Now, if I was ready, I would go ahead and choose okay. I would go to embroidery. And if, again, if I want to use my projector, I can do that. So let's just look at it with the projector. I'm going to turn the camera for you. Oops, sorry about that. I have my camera plugged in. So let me unplug it. I'm sorry about all the jerking. 
and I want to zoom in so you can see it. Let me turn this. Now, this is what I was saying about the projector versus looking at the camera. You can see how this is projected and I'm moving that box and I have that in other videos and you can see how it's projecting those stitches on the fabric. So I, I can look at this and see if I'm satisfied with it before I actually commit to stitching it out. I hope this video was fun for you. And if you have questions, please post them on YouTube or in the Facebook group, Just Stitching with the Brother Luminaire. Thanks for your time. Please like and subscribe to my videos. Have a good day.